Okay, if you've watched my first video on how to slate a roof, we've seen the vital process of laying the undersarking and slate battens to gauge. Now we have the foundations for a good slate roof in place, let's carry on with fitting the slates. Because we put the battens into the correct gauge earlier, we no longer have to worry about spacings in the vertical position to the top of the roof. We do however have to give thought to the lateral or horizontal spacing. Starting with the eave slate or starter course, you will want to start at the edge of the roof. In this case we have one unmovable edge where the roof abuts a wall and one potentially movable edge to the verge at the left hand side of the roof. Always start with an unmovable edge first if you have one. Now, with an eaves row of slates, you always want to start with either a half width slate or a slate and a half. This is so that when your first full slate goes on, it's covered by the eave slate underneath to make it waterproof. And this is called a brick bond pattern. And we'll see this a bit later on. Pictured here with a translucent first full slate, you can see the cover created by the first slate and the slate and a half eave slate. If we put on another standard size eave slate and then another translucent full slate, you can see this overlapping process better. Alternatively, starting with a half eave slate first is exactly the same principle, but we're using a half of a slate's width for the first eaves like this. It doesn't really matter whether you start with a half slate eaves or a slate and a half eaves, unless you're using small or narrow slates or the pitch is quite shallow, in which case I would use the larger slate and a half start. For my roof, with a good pitch and a nice wide slate, I'm starting with a half eave slate. Now, on the other side of my roof, I have an overhanging verge so I will be using fibre cement soffit strips in this case, which will overhang the brickwork on the end by 50 millimetres or two inches. Next, I put on another half eave slate, flush with the edge of the soffit strips. Now it's just a matter of filling in with more full width eave slates and spacing them out between the two half eaves like this. Adjust the slate's horizontal eave spacing so the slates have a 3mm gap between each slate. Hopefully you should be able to slightly expand or contract the gaps between the slates to fit without any cutting. If this isn't the case, a slight compromise may have to be made by moving the overhanging of the soffit strip just a little as well. Now is a good time to make sure that the battens sit back from the edge of the soffit strip by 25 to 50 millimetres, that's 1 to 2 inches. This will allow for any mortar bed to sit here without damp swelling the batten or damaging the mortar later on. OK, so now we have the starter course set out, we know that the next row of full slates will fit into position like this. Here I've made the first full row of slates slightly see-through so you can see how they overlap the eave slates in a brick bond pattern. Now we know everything is spaced out correctly, it's OK to fix the eave slates into position. Just before we start nailing on the rest of our new roof, it's a good idea to set out some reference points for upright and square. This will help you not only make the roof look nice, but keep your gaps and side laps nice and even. One of the easiest and most accurate ways to do this these days is to use a laser square, like this. Then using a pencil or chalk line, mark a few upright reference points to keep you on the straight and narrow. Another way is to make a simple square out of roofing buttons using the 345 rule and lay it on the roof for marking. And of course, if your verge is upright and you have one, you can simply measure from the edge and mark the buttons accordingly. Obviously, you can mark these as often as you like to keep yourself in check. When fixing your slates, make sure the nails do not penetrate through the button out the other side and puncture your new undersarking. Another common mistake is hitting the nails too far home. This will stress, bend or crack your slates. 
or if you have the nail too proud it can puncture the slate above at a later stage. What you're actually looking for is the nail head to just touch the slate without applying any pressure to it. Now that your starter course or eaves row is nailed into position it's time to look at lead soakers for an abutment flashing to the wall if you have one. I'm not going to cover this in any detail now but you will probably find it as a dedicated video later on. I'll just quickly go through the sequence in pictures only for those who are interested. If you don't have an abutment wall or flashings it's a simple matter of nailing on your next row of full slates in the overlapping brick bond pattern as shown earlier. Remembering of course to allow the 3mm gap between the face of every slate. When working from a Virgil gable always make sure that your slate is parallel and in line with the edge of the roof or soffit strip. And this is the next row and what it will look like and the next row and so on all the way to the top of the roof. Now the only trouble with working sequentially one row at a time as we've just seen is that you will end up sitting or walking all over your freshly laid slates and possibly cracking or damaging them as you clamber up and down. A much better method is to work from one edge inwards like this. If the edge is square and upright it also makes a good additional guide to keep your slate's lateral spacing correct. When you reach the top with the last of your full slates it's time to finish the top of the roof with another course of smaller half height slates called top slates. These are normally full height slates cut just above the nail holes and fit onto the last top exposed pattern like this. If you're finishing the roof with ridge tiles a 75mm or 3 inch cover onto the slates is recommended or if it's a lead flashing overlap a minimum of 150mm or 6 inches is also recommended. Well that's pretty much it for this guide. If you need to know a bit more about lead soakers or how to slate a valor I'm sure that will be available quite soon in another video. If you have combined this video with the previous one that will be linked not only on my website but in the description bar you should now be well on your way to slating your own roof. For more helpful information about slating including head laps, roof pitches and lots of other stuff please visit the website link. Well that's it and thanks for watching.